It, President Trump told me it was Chris Christie who recommended the 45th president elevate Christopher Wray to FBI director. And in retrospect, it was, quote, probably a mistake, President Trump said. Here's Trump's reaction to Christopher Wray's Judiciary Committee testimony Thursday in part two of my interview with the 45th president. So Christopher Wray, the other day, uh, in front of the judiciary leadership, is defending the FBI, saying, no, there's no politics at the FBI. Well, look, uh, the FBI has become tremendously political. DOJ is weaponized. It's not, and the FBI is weaponized, too. I know other people in the FBI, they're incredible. The agents, they're incredible. So I hate to say the FBI, because you have people in the FBI that are very angry. When Comey went after Hillary Clinton, didn't go after her, when he mentioned her crimes, and then she's been exonerated. It was a matter. They were going to have a strike in the FBI, in my opinion. That's what I heard, and that's what I read, and I really believe that. And that's why he had to come out and say, keep it going a little while before he tried to exonerate her. But if you remember that stupid press conference that he had, where he talked about all of her so-called crimes, and he said, but she's not guilty of this, she's not guilty of that, she's not guilty. She, he, all he had to do is say she's not guilty and people wouldn't have known what happened. But he, you know, he liked to grandstand, so he wanted to be on television for an hour. And the FBI, the real people of the FBI, not the corrupt ones, because most of them aren't corrupt, they're great. But the agents and a lot of the people in the FBI, they watched that too. They thought it was terrible. And I believe they were going to literally strike. And then what happened is Comey said, if you remember, he'd exonerated her. Then he had to go back and says, well, no, no, I'm going to redo it. And he's, it was a whole mess. Mm -hmm. But the people in the FBI are not that way. But the top people have been so bad when you have McCabe and you have uh, Lisa Page and the whole group struck, struck and Page. That was a wonderful couple. Well, they're all when wonderful. When you had all of these people with the insurance policy, what happens, darling? What happens if he doesn't? What happens if he wins? Oh, it won't happen. I remember. But if he does, remember this. But if he does, we have an insurance policy. Well, the insurance policy is, we're going to get him out. How bad, when you see that, now, if I didn't fire Comey, and remember, some people said, oh, you should have fired him. I fired him very early. Very, very early. You know, a lot of people, some very smart people that you know very well, said I made a mistake in firing Comey because that was what upset the Epcot. Now they say, it was one of the greatest instinctual moves that they've ever seen because the insurance policy was they were going to get me out. They were going to try and get me up by making fake charges and fake crimes. Hmm. Who would have thought this could have happened to our country? Who would have thought? It's not even possible. Now, the FBI has tremendous problems of credibility. The DOJ is weaponized like I've never seen before. I mean, they come after me on boxes and they can't find drugs. You know how many cameras they have? opposite the front door of the Situation Room, where these drugs were very, the, the cocaine. Now I understand they have many other forms of drugs. They know who this was. They know the person. It's impossible. How can they not know well, the, the person? The Secret Service said that they are ending the investigation yeah. of the cocaine found at the White House, and they didn't have any fingerprints, and they said that they cannot identify who, uh, whose cocaine it was. You know, I've gotten to know the Secret Service really well, okay? And I can't speak more highly of people. These are incredible people. And I believe that they know everything. They're really smart and really good at what they do. And I don't think it's possible for bags of cocaine to be left in a certain area by the Situation Room. I'm not talking about, you know, five blocks away. The Situation Room where you decide on war, where you decide on nuclear, where you... So, and are terrorists so allowed in that area where the cocaine was I found? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think only people that have strong passes or family members are able to go through those doors. It's very interesting. I was much nicer to Biden in speeches than all. I actually was criticized by some people. You know, I respect the office of the presidency, and not that I was perfect with him, but I could have been much tougher. The last uh, few weeks have been very nasty and very tough and very truthful. He's a corrupt man. He's a corrupt president. He's grossly incompetent. And the reason I ask, because they actually indicted an opponent who was the president of the United States. I got indicted. I said, I can't believe it. I got indicted. I could tell you stories of what happened when I went down to New York and when I went to 
with policemen looking at me and crying. You know, Ted Kennedy told me he was a friend of mine, believe it or not, different sides of the aisle, but he was a friend of mine. Uh, he liked me, I liked him, I did him a big favor one time that helped him a lot on something, and he always liked me, and he said to me a long time ago, I was saying, who's the smartest senator? And I won't tell you the answer because I don't particularly like the guy. He said, who's the dumbest? I said, probably Joe. This is Ted Kennedy, he knew them all. I said, what do you mean Joe, who's Joe? Joe Biden, he's the dumbest. And so Ted Kennedy said Joe Biden was the dumbest senator. Years ago, that's right. He said he was the dumbest. I said, who's the dumbest? He said, probably Joe. He said he's hale and hearty and well-met personality. But you go to, to policy or you go to taxes or anything that's complicated, he doesn't have a clue. This is stuff that he told me years ago. Who would have thought this guy was going to become president? But in prime time, he wasn't very good. Was it a mistake to put Christopher Wray there? I mean, obviously the FBI is not following any of the things that you're yeah, talking about. Sadly, it probably was. You know, he was recommended very strongly by Chris Christie, who's, you know, a sad case. I mean, I watch him. He's a sad case. Well, he's in this race, he said, just to take you down. Well, I know. And you know how he's doing? He's at 1%, and he probably won't even make the debate stage. Uh, no, Chris is a... He's sad. I mean, I watched him the other day. He said, I built 47 miles of wall, I built over 500 miles of wall, and that's Homeland Security statements. Uh, I had the safest border in the history of our country. I built massive miles of wall, and was going to put up another 200 miles. Everything was built, they just had to erect it, would have taken three weeks. Far beyond my statement about building a wall, I was way over. I mean, what we did was incredible, but between the wall, and Mexico, when you say Mexico, I got Mexico, you know what? I got them to pay for 28,000 soldiers on our border. You know, people said, well, Mexico. Well, Mexico did pay. They gave me free of charge 28,000 soldiers. In a second term, will you shut down the border? Yeah, I will close up the border except that people come in legally. Because we need people to come in. We want people to come in. But we don't want people coming in from mental institutions and from uh, jails. Why has it been so difficult to get an immigration policy agreed upon? Uh, you have different viewpoints, you have different everything, but I didn't care about immigration policy. I didn't want anyone to come in unless they came in legally. But let me just uh, circle back on the FBI. There's a conversation underway right now about a complete reform of the FBI and the Department of Justice because of all of these reasons that you mentioned. Take a step back. How should the FBI be reformed? For example, the Republicans say, take the headquarters out of Washington, uh, make the headquarters in Alabama. Good idea. And what else do you want to see in terms of a reform of these agencies? So I had a plan to take down the FBI building and build a brand new building in Washington because I think that the FBI should be somewhat close to DOJ if they're all honest people. You know, I mean, they want to move it to a different state and we're going to move it to Virginia, build this, you know, thing. It was going to cost... I mean, if you talk about environmentalists, the traffic was massive, et cetera, et cetera. It's already massive. Well, they want three and a half billion dollars. They want it to be bigger than the Pentagon. They want it to be this monster building very far away. I like the idea of it being close to the Justice Department because they work together to me. And they had the land, they had everything. You could renovate the building or build a new building in that location. There'd be a little bit of uh, turmoil during construction, but not a lot. And that was what I preferred. That's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And it would have cost a lot less money, but I liked the FBI being somewhat close to the Department of Justice. I think it was, and I will tell you, the FBI people felt that was good also. So you don't agree, move it to Alabama with what the Republicans are I'll move anything to Alabama because I love Alabama. If <laughs> Alabama wants it, I'm all for it. So sure. no, I love Alabama. Yeah. But, but I think there's something to be said about the FBI and the Department of Justice or Injustice. Right now it's not Department, it's the Department of Injustice. I think they have to be, you know, they work together. They can walk across the street. So every time you have to need somebody in court or whatever you're doing, they have to ride an hour and a half or two hours in traffic from a place in Virginia that's very far away. Should FISA be uh, reviewed? Should well, no, FISA FISA's is corrupt. You look at what, what the FBI did with hundreds and hundreds of, of cases where they, you know, I, I could tell you some of the names that everybody hears about, but you look at hundreds of cases and violations, and I'm actually very surprised that the judges uh, didn't get angry about it. You know, you never hear anything about it. FISA was corrupt, the whole system of FISA, the FISA courts, 
and that the chief judges are there, and even the chief judge, that they didn't do something about it, and they never really made a statement about it. They never complained about it, and yet the FBI was caught on many, many occasions. Look at my thing. They signed fake documents having to do with Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia was a total scam. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.